Welcome to Rebuilding a Stuart Model's Twin Victoria Steam Engine. This is part 5 and I'm starting on the other cylinder. I'm also going to cover removing the paint, fitting piston rings and packing the glands. Here you see me removing the second cylinder and I hope it's better than the first cylinder. The first cylinder was not very well made, that's why I decided to make another one. That's done now, so I'm just going to have a quick look at this. Like the other cylinder, this one's coming apart OK and none of the fastenings seem to be sheared off or broken. That's a good thing. One of the studs came away with the nut. As you can see here, it's missing on the corner. So when I put the engine back together, all the studs will be fastened into the casting using a compound, but not Loctite 603, that's far too strong. I'll probably just use some 542, the hydraulic seal, and it's enough to hold the studs in place, so that when you dismantle the engine at any time, particularly when it's been in service for a while, at least the whole stud will not come out when you undo the nut. Well the good news is all the threads seem fine and the port face is in quite good shape. It's much better machining than on the other one. So now continuing I'm going to dismantle the crosshead and as you can see like the other side there's a massive gap between the actual bars. This is no good at all, the slide bars need to be a snug fit on the main crosshead. Looking at the position of the cylinder and the position of the crosshead with the bars, it looks like I'm going to have to make some more spacers. And making spacers is a very simple job. Once I make two or three to get the test level for the height, then I will make some that are quite ornate, quite similar to the ones that are currently between the guide bars on the video at the moment. There is one modification that I'm going to make. With a Stuart Victoria, the design just has a pin that passes through the crosshead and through the fork of the connecting rod. I've made a couple of these engines in the past, and I always find that this pin moves around. So on this engine, in the square bit at the end of the connecting rod, I'm going to drill it, tap it, and put a grub screw in so that the cross shaft will be held in position. Nothing on these cylinders was particularly tight, and that's a good thing, including the two small 7BA countersunk bolts. They're coming out quite easily as you can see here. And that's a good thing because sometimes on an old engine, with this design where the countersunk bolts are behind a bracket, they get rusty and become part of the cylinder cover, then they're very difficult to remove. But at this stage it's very easy. And likewise on the other cover, on the front cover, they're really just coming out so easily. It's very easy to totally forget about the gasket on the exhaust port until you need one. And I don't have any of these. So very carefully using a craft knife, I'm removing the gasket and putting it in a safe place. Luckily as this engine's never run, they're in very good condition just like the new gasket. When I fed air into this engine, nothing really happened. So I'm now going to investigate the reason for nothing happening. And it's quite simple. The cores are full of sand. Now this is so easily overlooked. The good thing about the Stuart Models Victoria is that the steam ports are cast in at the foundry. This is a very good thing because it means you do not have to drill the steam ways from the end of the cylinder to the ports. But, if it's full of sand, it's not going to work. And this sand is very dense stuff, it's meant to be, it's how it works with the casting process. And if any oil gets added to it, it gets even denser. My airline would not blow the stuff away. I had to poke it out with the paper clip, then I could use the airline to get rid of the rest of it. I have a personal preference for not having paint on the cylinder covers. Only on the cast part, the part that's left rough cast. With the machine part of the cylinder cover, I like this to be left in natural cast iron. There's no real rust problem, you can always wipe it over with an oily rag, like as in full size practice. And it looks so much better, because if you tighten a nut onto a stud, and you don't use a washer, and again a washer doesn't look too good, you're going to chew up the paint if it's painted, so I'll leave it unpainted. Cellulose thinners just dissolves the paint, and once I've finished with the cellulose thinners, I put it back into another tin, which is dirty cellulose thinners, and I use it for other jobs. Here are all the components in natural machine finish and not painted, apart from one of the cylinders, and I would generally paint the cylinder body anyway, so I didn't see any point in removing the paint from one of the cylinders when I was going to paint it again. On this engine, the piston rings were totally wrong. These piston rings appear to be neoprene, which is okay if you're going to run on compressed air, but if you run on steam, the temperature of the steam, particularly if it's superheated, will just melt the O-rings. 
So what we need to use are steam grade silicone ones. And here you see me removing the old piston ring with a very blunt craft knife, trying not to cut my fingers at the same time. And I'm going to fit a couple of silicone ones. When fitting the silicone type, make sure that you fully lubricate the groove before you fit them. And be very careful across the sharp edges. In fact, if you machine the pistons yourself, always take off the inner sharp edges slightly. That way the piston will not cut into the silicone piston ring when it's been fitted. And here we see a pair of nicely fitted silicone piston rings ready for fitting to the engine. Very oily as well. While the engine is in this dismantled state, it's very easy to pack the glands. So I had a look and they weren't packed anyway. So I'm using some of my old graphited yarn to pack the gland. This graphited yarn is some real old stuff that I use. I actually unpick some full-size braided yarn because I find the modern stuff not too good. This is great though, once it's in, it's in for the duration and you don't get any steam leaks. There's something deeply satisfying about doing this and I don't really know what it is. Particularly when you put the nuts back on without dropping them on the floor, then that's quite good. I notice my fingernails are a bit strange at the moment, that's probably with having them in the cellulose thinners for half an hour. When you tighten the glands, don't go mad, you need to nip up the gland and then back it off a little bit. That way you get a nice sliding motion without any pressure leaks. If you over tighten the gland, you will actually score the piston rod. So that's about it for now. Everything's there, ready to go back together. In the next video I'll cover painting the parts and putting them all back together. And then all I have to do is get the thing to work properly. Oh yes, and I almost forgot I need to make a new crankshaft. But apart from that, everything's going very well. So thanks for watching and I hope it's been of some use to you.